Well, hello everyone. As you all know, Genesis Week has been shut down for the summer, uh, for the end of the season. Uh, you can still catch the show every weekday, uh, every week on Thursday evenings, uh, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time in Canada on the Miracle Channel. And even though it was shut down, this is a current events news science show related to the Origins controversy. And this past week, uh, we had a... Uh, uh, a bit of a news item here and uh, so I thought I would bring in a good friend Edgar Nuremberg who uh, made a fascinating little discovery this past week. Now Edgar is one of the four gentlemen who helped build Canada's first permanent creation museum and some of you will remember that. Uh, it literally made international headlines when it opened in the thriving metropolis of Big Valley, Alberta and uh, Edgar was one of the four gentlemen who helped to build that museum. And uh, Edgar provided a couple of different displays in the museum. Uh, one of the most popular ones was the uh, a copy of the Lambeth Scrolls from uh, Lambeth Palace in England, which traces the genealogies from King Henry VI right through to Adam and Eve. Uh, another beautiful fossil that he provided for the museum was uh, one of the Green River Formation fossils with a huge, beautiful palm frond uh, with some, of course, the classic fossil fish. Which brings us to this week's story. Uh, Edgar's uh, daytime job is operating an excavator and he was uh, helping to excavate a basement in Calgary when he struck the find of the century. So thanks for coming on the show today, Edgar. Well, that's exaggerating a little there, Ian, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now there's, uh, oh boy, there was so many questions. I've, I've had so many people, oh my goodness, I've had dozens and dozens of articles handed to me over the past couple of days uh, on Facebook, on the website, by email, all about you. <laughs> Everyone's talking about you. You've made international news again. And uh, there's several questions that have been uh, sent in w uh, from a ridiculous number of viewers that I want to see if we can get addressed. Um, but let's start off with the find itself. What did you find? Why is it significant? Well, I was finishing digging the basin, Ian, and... Uh Probably had a couple hours left, and I was using the ripper tooth because we were digging in pretty hard sandstone. So uh, with the ripper tooth, I must have maybe loosened it, and then I put my bucket on, and then uh, the slab that the fish happened to be in just came into the bucket properly. And when I lifted the bucket up, I, the bucket up, I could see it quite clearly from the cab that there was a couple of outlines of some black fish, and they were very identifiable as fish. So yeah, it was a pretty interesting day. Okay, and uh, now everyone is amazed at the same thing, okay? Everybody's saying the same thing. How can this guy, who believes in a 6,000 year old earth, <laughs> dig up a 60 million year old fish, then walk away still believing the earth is only 6,000 years old? So come on, Edgar, explain yourself here. Well, Ian, here's the best that I can do. Uh, after I got the fish in the bucket, I actually looked at the fish to see if there was a date stamp on it, but I couldn't find the date stamp. It wasn't there. Really? So, no, I don't know date stamp on it. So I, I figured, well, how old is this thing? So, <laughs> <laughs> no, all kidding aside, and I do know about radiometric dating too, so mm -hmm. I understand that I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm educated in that area, so. Yeah, so you know, and, and yeah, the radiometric dating has an awful lot of assumptions in it, which of course, you know, what makes each one of us if we assume something, so. Right, right. <laughs> and of course, this isn't the first fossil you found. I mean, we've, we've gone rock hounding before, fossil, hunt, fossil collecting and hunting before. Um, but this is interesting because, you know, you, know, you bring up the, the dates not stamped on it. No. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the interesting, this is interesting because uh, you were even mentioned on YouTube. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called The Young Turks, very popular YouTube channel. They deal with like news items and stuff and give commentary. I guess a lot like Genesis Week does. And uh, it was hilarious because they were quite condescending to you, saying, you know, here's this guy who found this 60 million year old fish, walks away, still believes the earth was 6,000 years old, and, and here's the kicker. Uh, they said 
they knew the fish was absolutely 60 million years old because of carbon dating. So I found it ironic that here, here they were portraying you as some kind of blind fool, then quoting carbon dating as if that proved the fish was 60 million years old. Now, you know this. You're, you're educated in this. So I, I already know you know this. <laughs> but for the sake of the young Turks and those who are watching who don't know this, uh, you can't get an age of 60 million years from carbon-14 dating. You just can't. Uh, no, you need gradimetric dating. Yes, and even then, that doesn't work on sedimentary rock. <laughs> so they can't get a radiometric date from there. But what's really interesting here is you know, the absolute <laughs> highest age you can get from carbon-14 dating would be 100,000 years old because there is no more carbon-14 after 100,000 years. So when we look through the fossil record and the rock record, Every sample, no matter where we get it from in the rock record, even the Precambrian, they always come back with radiocarbon ages of between 5,000 and 50,000 years old. That's right. Not quite aware of that, Ian. And so what's really interesting here is uh, we're, we're talking like, you know, uh, dinosaur bones, which, uh, you know, we've, we've collected. Dinosaur bones, um, uh, diamonds, uh, seashells, uh, coal. Uh, crude oil, natural gas, all these things. And so when we go through the rock record, and no matter where we are in the rock record, from immediate recent to, say, over 500 million alleged years ago, they always return ages of 5,000 to 50,000 years old. Now, what does that demonstrate? That demonstrates that all of the rock record was laid down, ge 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 geologically speaking. Time. What's that? Yeah, pretty much at the same time. Yeah. Geologically speaking, at the same time, instantaneously. And it was all done in just a few thousand years ago. That's what the evidence shows. The, the carbon-14 evidence. So it's an interesting they bring that up. So if, if this fish does not prove an old earth, um, what, what if, if it's not proof of you, for you to an old earth, then what exactly does this fish prove to you? Well, if you look at the fish up, when it presented itself to, an, to me in the bucket, of course, I immediately recognized it as a fish, right? Mm -hmm. Now, anybody else that's looking at it, and there's been thousands of people that have looked at it in the pictures on the website and actually personally, mm -hmm. uh, seeing the, the actual fish, and everybody recognizes it as a fish. <laughs> now, they use the word primitive, right? but I have to ask you the question, what is primitive about this fish? Yeah. It looks exactly like a fish today, maybe a perch or a trout. Mm -hmm. We're not exactly sure, but it's a fish. Right, right. Now, ha has it been identified yet that you know of? Uh, they have some general names for it, but it's too big for me to say. Okay, okay. So, okay, so it's interesting you bring this up because this is kind of segueing into my next question. Uh, one guy was claiming that this fish is, is good evidence for evolution. It's actually a, a transitional or an intermediate form. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Well, I think the answer is clearly that it's not a primitive fish. There's nothing primitive about it. It's exactly like it is today. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that if you look in the general area, buried along with this fish, mm -hmm. you dig up clams, leaves, wood, snails, the fish, bone material. There's one piece that I found, uh, Darla Zelensky, the paleontologist, pointed out that there was bone material in, in uh, one particular specimen. Okay. And this whole area, in the Evanston area in particular, is very rich in fossils, in those type of fossils. Right. So this fish, or the five fish, were buried together with all this material that I just mentioned. So to have all that material mixed together, mm -hmm. it had to have been vast, vast amounts of water in a very turbulent state. Okay. Interesting. So, of course... I know where you're getting at, <laughs> but you're implying, of course, Noah's flood. That's how this all exactly. Got there. Okay, yeah. and so there was even even uh, when you say there was bones found. Well, not bones. There's one little piece of bone that's very identifiable as a bone. Okay. There may be more, but that's the one that there. So one piece of bone, well, of course, would indicate that there may be more. Right. But we found one particular. It's a very small piece, about two inches long. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is bone. Okay. Okay. Well, who knows? Right, and then that all did appear to be uh, uh, fossil, fossil bone. Yes, it's all buried together. Okay. Back the piece the bone is found in. There's a, there's an imprint of a leaf. 
There's a snail in there, there's shells in there, and there's wood material all in one little block. On the one about block. six inches in diameter. Okay. And apparently um, the, there had not been any intact fish found in this area up to this point. Is that correct? Not in a Calgary area. Okay. There has been in uh, High River, there was some, some gars. Oh, yes. Okay. And in Joffrey, there were some found there. And uh, not very many. They are extremely rare. Yes. Extremely rare. Okay. Now, yes. a, n a number of people asked um, also why you gave this fish to the Royal Terrell Museum. Now, I know the answer, but I thought I'd ask anyway so you could, <laughs> so you could answer everybody anyway on that point. Why, why did the Terrell get the fossil? Do I have to be uh, truthfully honest? <laughs> well, no, but I mean, you're, okay, we're, here's, here's we're the answer up strife here on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it would have been nice to have kept it in my garage, mm -hmm. but uh, in talking to my wife, she kind of said, well, you know that the penalties for keeping a fossil and trying to sell it are $50,000 and a year in jail? <laughs> She said she wasn't going to be visiting me in jail over a rock, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. She turned it in. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically... No, I turned it in because it was the right thing to do, Ian. Right, right. Yeah. And basically the point I was getting at was that's the laws in Alberta. That's uh, the laws, me. yes. They're very, uh, very harsh. Yeah, so, <laughs> so basically the Alberta law is that vertebrate fossils in particular must go to, I, I think it was the Terrell, is it not? That's right. Okay. So, uh, government, a government institution of some sort. Right. Not necessarily the Tyrell, but one of the museums uh, run by the government. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. And so this, this, of course, brings up a controversy that's gone in, on in Alberta since the law was that's imposed. Right. Is because, yeah. you know, we've, we've been to the dinosaur beds in Alberta. Yeah. We're watching and documenting uh, through our research at the Big Valley Creation Science Museum. We've even been researching and documenting we're watching all these dinosaur remains getting destroyed by nature destroyed by the elements. and nobody's allowed to excavate them that's right and so that's that's been part of the controversy um i'm not opposed you know i'm not opposed to the terrell getting fossils um it's just when no one else is allowed to because we we have professionals where we have all excavated fossils uh in various different places uh been trained by some of the best in the world and yet we are not allowed to go and excavate these fossils uh, or even for that matter keep them for the big valley creation science museum for example that's just the laws but uh anyway okay enough of that yeah the laws really are counterproductive yes they have yeah counterproductive yep so okay so there's been like i said this has been international news <laughs> It's been quite the fallout from this. What's what's been the response, the reaction so far? Yeah, you're right, Ian. Uh, pretty much every paper in, in uh, Western Canada has picked it up, and from what I can see, uh, the U.S. Uh, has actually been in, in uh, not interpreted, what's the translated into Turkish and oh, yeah. into Dutch. I know, so okay. it's gone bilingual. Uh huh. Uh, but the comments. Uh, the CBC article, it was some 500 comments, and I don't think I saw one positive one, so I am a little bit hurt. Ah, oh, well, yeah. I think you're a nice guy, Edgar, there. Well, that's what one of them said. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, there's a positive comment for you. Ah, well. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, yeah, welcome to the internet, eh? Yeah, welcome to the <laughs> the internet. <laughs> and we do get some, we've, we've gotten a lot of traffic. I th oh, I forgot to mention this too. Uh, the Big Valley Museum website actually went down for a day and a half um, because it went over bandwidth because of so many visitors because of this. Right. Uh, so, I mean. Well, and, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good <coughs> problem to have. And, of course, yeah. we get our usual hate mail there as well. And, right. and uh, this interview will be posted on the uh, Big Valley Creation Science Museum website as well, uh, by the okay. way. Um, but because uh, you're you are on you're on the board of the Big Valley Creation Science Museum, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, thank you so much for your time here, Edgar. I appreciate that, and I'm sure all the viewers will as well. You're welcome. Glad to be able to speak with you, there, Ian. And you can visit the Big Valley Creation Science Museum website. I'm, I'm even wearing my classy Big Valley Creation Science Museum T-shirt or dress shirt today. 
Uh, you can visit the museum via the internet at bvcsm.com or you can visit it in person in downtown beautiful Big Valley, Alberta. This was a Genesis Week interview, uh, but you can find this interview as well as a whole mess of other interviews and our weekly shows on the website genesisweek.com. God bless. Thank you.